church. Come on, Caleb. Uh, by the way, was he wearing pajamas last week? Just wondering. I'm not sure about the dress code around here. This is my holy garb for the day. True courage, you know, we're not talking about abusiveness or some kind of control. Uh, we're, we're talking about that courage that God puts in our life to help us win in life, to help us through the challenges and to cause us to be the people that He has called us to be. It's important that as we talk about courage, that we recognize courage is not the absence of fear or the absence of worry or the absence of doubt. We have all those things. Everybody has all those things, right? There's times in your life where you worry and you wonder and, and you doubt and you question and you get nervous, and courage causes you to push through anyway, to just go ahead and do the right thing anyway. So it's not never being afraid, it's being courageous anyway. And by the way, anybody who says, I've never been scared, I've never been nervous, I never have a doubt, they're lying. Humanity, every one of us, we have those thoughts, we have those challenges, we have those debates in our head, but we choose to act in a courageous way anyway. You know, you hear the stories of soldiers, men and women who have fought in battle and done heroic things. They've all talked about being nervous, being shaken, being scared, but they did what they had to do to save a friend, to save their people, to overcome, to win their battle. They had courage anyway. And maybe that's one of the tricks of the enemy. He, he says, well, you, you have that negative thought, so how could you win? You have that doubt. How could you have faith? You have that fear. How could you overcome? And then we give up because the enemy deceives us and tricks us. But no, we say, yeah, I've had my doubts. I've had my problems, my questions, my fears, my words, but I'm going to rise up anyway. I'm going to win this battle anyway. I'm going to get this job Anyway, I'm going to make this sale. I'm going to accomplish this goal. I'm going to succeed in life. Anyway, that's what God is putting into our life. Amen? One of the things we see in our world is, is an increase in sadness, uh, despair, depression. Much of this, I'm convinced, is a result of being discouraged, when you're discouraged, you feel like your life is out of control, right? Someone else is running the show, and you're just going along for the ride. When you're discouraged, you're disconnected from courage, you feel like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. What can I do? And so the economy is in control of me. The, the pandemic is in control. The government is in control. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my best here. And that disconnect from courage brings sadness. It brings a sense of despair and depression because you were designed by God to have courage. The Bible said you're created in the likeness and image of God and that you go into all the world, you are fruitful, you multiply, you have dominion, and you subdue your world. So if you're just kind of going along with the flow, right, any old dead fish can float downstream. So you feel like, I have no power. I have no ability. I'm just going, I'm just waiting for someone to send me a check. I'm just waiting for someone to take care of me. I just need someone to, you know, tell me what to do. Now you've lost that place where God created you. Because you were created to have dominion, not dominion over people, dominion over your world, over your circumstances. You were created to subdue. That means to overcome, to win, to rise above. So when you've lost that or not had that, then that vacuum in your soul gets filled with depression, with discouragement, with despair. And then you start trying to medicate. 
And that's why we drink too much. We, 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 we use the wrong things. We do the wrong things because that hole in our soul is going to take something. And if you don't give it something godly, it's going to be a vacuum. It's going to take something ungodly. So we, we don't want to go there. We want to be the people God designed us to be. Now think of it from this perspective. Every child is born with a sense of conquering, overcoming, subduing, right? I'm going to subdue the piano. I'm climbing the piano today. I don't care what mom said. Sure enough, you walk in your living room, there's your three-year-old on top of the piano. Why don't they stay on the floor? Because they're made like God. They climb mountains. They take risks. They stand up. They do what they're told not to do. That's children, right? We have the little nine-month-old grandson now. He's nine months old. He's trying to stand up. Now, you, when you're nine months old, it's dangerous to stand up. Most likely, you're going to fall. He don't care. I'm standing up. He just stiffens up. Stand me up, Papa. But, bro, you're going to fall down. I don't care. I'll get back up. Right? Every kid. Right? And then they start taking those steps, and here we go. You know, we all love it when the little kids start walking. But, man, when they're mobile, they're a lot more work. They're, they're, then they're falling, and they're going, and they've got to, and they're going to try because in their spirit, in their soul, have dominion, subdue, rise above, overcome, win the battle, take it on, no fear, I don't care, I'm going for it. That's every child. And it just keeps on like that through their early years. They're, I'm going to ride the bike. Well, you could fall. Yep, here we go. That's in every child. When did you stop standing up? When did you get scared of falling down? When did you stop riding the bike, taking the risk, climbing the mountain, going where someone told you not to go, doing what someone told you you can't do it? When did you stop following that spirit on the inside and listening to the world that said, be careful? Slow down. I'll tell you what's free speech. I'll tell you how much you can make. I'll tell, tell you where you can go. I'll tell you what's right and wrong. Leave it to me. I'll take care of you. What? I don't think so. I wasn't created that way. God didn't have that plan in my life. I'm going to be who God called me to be, and I'll fight anybody who tries to take it away from me. Courage comes from the inside because God made you to be a courageous, take it by force, overcome the devil, win in life person. That's a gift from God. We don't like dictators because they dictate. They tell you, what you can do. They tell you where you can go. They tell you if you can leave or not leave. They tell you how much you can have. And in the soul of every person, you either surrender to the depression yeah. under the dictator or you fight. And we know many people here today who fought, who said, oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Right? That, that's that courage. I'm going to fight back. I'm going to overcome. You're not going to make me a slave. You're not going to make me your party. You're not going to make me surrender. Something on the inside, I'm going to have courage. I'm going to be the person God created. I'll submit to the Lord. I'll submit to God's way. I don't submit to this world. Right? That's the kind of spirit you got to have. That's the kind of gumption. That's the kind of strength that God wants you to have. And I believe we have that, and that's why God is bringing blessing into our lives. So every child wants to be a superhero, right? Every child puts on a cape and wants to fly, be Spider-Man. Our, our little three-year-old, 
he, he's, he's coming to me now, and he's saying, Papa, let's get the bad guys. And I always say, where are they? And he said, they're over there. And I said, let's go get them. We got bats, sticks, guns, whatever it takes. Right? Every kid has that in his heart. Let's get the bad guys. Let's go win the battle. Let's go take them out. That's the way God created you. And when you lose that, and your attitude is, I just want someone to send me a check. I, I just want someone to pay my debts. I just want someone to give me a house. I just want someone to make my life easy. Now you can never be what God created you to be. You can never rise to the place, the fulfillment, the peace, the joy, the satisfaction that God wants you to have because you were not designed to surrender. You were designed to fight the fight of faith. Look in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation's a fun book. Tells us about the last days. And it tells us about uh, the judgment of the world. Satan released in the earth through the Antichrist, the beast, the dragon, all that stuff. In chapter 4, it says, come up and and the Lord speaks to John, who's writing the Revelation. And chapter 4, it says, come up hither, and John is taken up into heaven. So most theologians would think that that's the point where the church is raptured. So every Christian is taken off the earth. Some have already, obviously already died, gone on to be with the Lord. Those that are still here, boom, chapter 4, they go. Now once the church is raptured, there's no light in the world. There are no intercessors. There's nobody standing against the forces of evil. Satan, the Antichrist, can't do what he wants to do right now because you keep saying, I bind you, devil. We keep praying, I come against you, Satan. I stand against evil. I pray for the favor of God. I pray for the... As long as the church is here, there's light, there's prayer, there's intercession. God is working in the world. But as soon as the church goes to heaven... Chapter 4, boom, now the devil just starts doing what he wants, and people just go along with it. Now, here's an interesting thing. The Antichrist is able to take over the world, well, I should say a portion, a percentage of the world, by promising peace, prosperity, and safety. So the Antichrist says, I'll take care of you. You give me all the power. I'll give you some money, I'll give you some peace, I'll give you some safety. And the people who are left, right, the church is gone, they're like, yes, that's all I want. Somebody take care of me, give me peace, give me safety, and they just go along. Now, even with the church gone, there's a lot of people who never follow the Antichrist. There are people getting saved throughout the book of Revelation. So God is working even when the church has been removed. But in that circumstance where the Antichrist is working to gather the world under his control, John begins to weep. He sees it happening. and He begins to cry. Why would these people follow the Antichrist? Why would they surrender? Yeah, people will surrender when they feel someone's promising to take care of them. And that's not always a good thing. And so John is weeping, and look what happens in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5. One of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. So the elder who is around the throne of God, worshiping in heaven, says to John, don't cry. It's bad. It looks bad. We get it. However, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lord Jesus Christ, out of the root 
of David. He has overcome. He will bring the scroll. That's the word of God. He will loose the seals. The promises of God are still in operation. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one letter of God's word will ever fail. So the elder says to John, we got this. But look how he describes Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Like Wendy said earlier, many people have a wrong uh, perspective of God, a wrong idea of how God works, what, what's God's will, what God wants for their life. They, they've listened to religion and tradition and a perverted media, and they don't know what the Bible said is God's will. And many people see Jesus as weak, as nice. He's just a nice person. He, he, he's got long blonde hair and wears dresses. And maybe has a sheep under his arm. He likes sheepies. And that's what they think of Jesus. But the Bible said he's a lion. And if you mess with him and his people, he will roar. Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe of praise, he will roar out of heaven with the word of God, the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God. And he will defeat every enemy. Remember, Jesus went into the Satan into Satan's house and stayed in hell for three days and three nights and stared down the devil and triumphed over him through the cross. Yeah, don't think of Jesus as just sweet and nice. He is compassionate. He is loving. But to those Pharisees, he would roar. To those evils around him, he will roar. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He'll bring some courage that will make the devil tremble. In fact, the Bible said demons trembled when Jesus walked in the room. That's the kind of spiritual authority I pray that you will have. That's the kind of strength for life that I pray you will have. Most people, when you come, they're just glad you're there. You love them, you bless them, you give to them, you pray for them, you take care of them. We're so glad you're there. But if it's evil, they tremble because you're not teasing. You are not playing, and you are not scared. I've had people come, Pastor, I have a friend who has a demon. I said, let's cast it out in the name of Jesus. Oh, but it's a really big one. All right, cast that one out in the name of Jesus. Oh, but they've had it for a long time. First of all, a lot of people say they have demons. You know, it's just they got a head trip. But if it is a demon, we're not scared. We have the Spirit of God. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. We have the name of Jesus, who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Wendy's talking about media and movies, you know, all these movies with the demons, uh, the 13th, was that the 13th, and the, the, the expediter, the expedition, the, uh, the, huh, the exorcist. <laughs> I don't watch that stuff, but I promise you, there is no born again, spirit filled, Bible believing Christian in any of those movies. Now, there might be a weird little priest with a cross. What the heck does that mean? You trying to take aim or something? Right? There might be some weird religious person, right, just sprinkling holy water, which, by the way, that water came out of the same tap that you and I are drinking from. What the heck? You know what I mean? There, there's maybe a religious person, and they're, they're trying to, but no, if there was a spirit-filled Tongue talking, name of Jesus, Lion of the tribe of Judah, that movie would be 10 minutes long. Right? You cast that devil out, you heal that person, you get them free, you get them whole, you go on about your business. But they don't show that. 
Oh, no, they show an hour and a half of fear and blood and craziness because the devil's so powerful. Jesus treads on serpents and scorpions, and he said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, we, we don't need to be arrogant or, or whatever, but we're not scared, definitely. We are definitely not scared. Why? Because the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in us. Rise up, Christian man. Rise up, Christian women. Be who God says you are. Live like God tells you to live. Find that courage on the inside. Wendy and I have been to South Africa many times, and uh, we're close with the church there in South Africa. It's actually the largest church in South Africa. There's like 20 different campuses now, hundreds of thousands of people there all the time, and just an amazing church. But one of the members has like 100 animals at his house. He, he's just this rich guy, and he likes these animals, so he gets them and he collects these animals. Hippopotamus, giraffes, cheetahs. He took us in his little tractor. Wendy and I went out in the middle of the field, and we're standing there, and seven cheetahs came running up to us. And I'm like, uh, do they eat us? I mean, he didn't look scared, so I was trying to not look scared. But he's like, oh, no, they're fine. Cheetahs, I guess, are a unique breed and, and freak me out. But, but when we were there, he had 18 lions living in his house. And they were all little, little cubs. 18 and his kids play with them, wrestle, have naps, sleeping on the lion. Yeah, they're like kitties. But at one year old, he said, nope, out of the house. One year old, they go to the pen, and it's high fence, and he's, he never trusts, he would never turn his back on. Born and raised in his house, playing with his children, he would never trust them because the lion is the king of the jungle. And you know, if your little Fifi poodle has a bad day, you get a nip. But if a lion has a bad day, he eats your head. These guys are king. They roar, and when they roar, they just sh you just shudder. It's like, wow. So a lion is powerful. And just seeing him up close will just cause you to realize the king of the jungle is for real. God calls you born of the king, Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, filled with the spirit of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come on, some of you moms that rise up to protect your children, to teach your children, to lead your children, that's that lion. That's, that's that spirit of God. And dads, we need to rise up like that. We need to have that spirit to lead our marriage, to lead our family, to be the people God's called us to be. That's the kind of courage we're talking about. We were recently at a wedding with two young people, like 20 and 21. These Youngsters look like teenagers now, right? These 21-year-olds look like they're 12, 13. I'm like, you're not old enough to get married. I'm 21. I know everything. So they had the wedding, and Wendy and I were there. And then after the wedding, uh, the, the groom asked me, uh, what, what would you give me? Counsel, what would you give me for, for, for our future together? And I said, work it out, bro. <laughs> and he's like, but... You're a pastor, 44, you've been married for 44 years. What can you tell me? And I said, I'm telling you, work it out. Whatever comes up, work it out. Never give up, never run away, never avoid, never deny. Work it out. Give yourself, get in there, go for it, right? That's courage. That's how you have a lasting marriage. That's how you have a godly family. That's how you prosper and win in life. You never bow. You never surrender. You're the lion. You roar. And you fight till you win in every circumstance. Right? So that's what God 
has for you. Look in Joshua chapter 1. Now Joshua chapter 1 is when Joshua took over leadership in Israel. Right? So Moses has died. Moses was 120. The Bible said his back was not weak and his eyes were not dim. Let's go for that. 120, feeling good, still can see. I'm not sure how his hearing was, but he was there. Joshua takes over. Joshua's leader of Israel. Now, Israel's not had a good history of following their leaders, right? That's how they ended up in slavery, disobeyed God, disobeyed his word. They don't follow very well. And they didn't follow Moses, which is why they ended up 40 years in a wilderness. So now Joshua's the leader, and he's like, oh, man, what am I going to do? By the way, he was the young guy. He was only 85 years old. So stop talking about retirement, <laughs> right? So Joshua's praying, Lord, what do I do? How do I lead this people? Joshua 1, verse 6, look what he said. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Be strong and of good courage. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law or all the word which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8, this book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So how are we going to win this battle, Lord? How are we going to take over this land? Remember, Abraham had lived there. Isaac had lived there. Jacob had lived there. And then through the generations, Israel got distracted. They thought Egypt could take care of them. They ran to Egypt because of a plague and a famine. Not good. They surrendered their place. And for 400 and some years were slaves. So God sends Moses. He leads them out. They cross the Red Sea. Then they cross the River Jordan. Joshua's leading them back into their land. This is your inheritance. Your people lived here. Your granddaddy lived here. This is your land. But we got to take it. We got to fight for it. We got to possess this land. How are we going to do it? We're going to be strong. And we're going to be very courageous. And we're going to observe to do everything God's word says. That's the key. That's the simple answer. And you will prosper and have good success. Now, isn't it interesting? Though God did all those miracles in Egypt and brought the people out, did all those miracles in the wilderness through the Red Sea and manna and food and all the miraculous events, and then crossed the River Jordan on dry ground, another miracle, all that God did, they still had to be strong and very courageous. If you keep thinking, well, God's will will just happen. If God wants it to happen, it'll happen. Whatever's God's will, I'm just, I'm just going to accept that. You'll never have God's will. God's will doesn't come to those who have given up and are just floating down the river. God's will comes to those who are strong and courageous and who live God's word. Speak it, believe it, live it. The word of God will not depart out of my mouth. In other words, I want to be saying it all the time. I will not turn from the right hand or the left. 
I'm going to be strong and courageous to do all that he said. And then you'll make your way prosperous. You'll have good success. Right? Well, if it's God's will, won't it just happen? No. You have a will in your home. Does it always happen? <laughs> Mom said, nope. <laughs> no, it happens when you make sure it happens. This is my will. I was watching one of the parents the other day with their children, and their children wanted to eat all the wrong things. But the parent was watching, and the parent's like, nope, we don't eat that. We eat this. I don't want that. This is what we eat. I don't like that. This is what we eat. I don't feel like it. This is what we eat or you don't eat. Okay, this asparagus looks great. <laughs> right, but your will doesn't happen just because you want it to happen. It happens when you make sure it happens. Parents who give up their homes end up with a lot of rebellion, a lot of confusion, and a lot of pain. Parents who establish a good will have the blessing of God. Wow. Same thing in God's family. God said, here's my will. You got to make sure and follow it. He always gives you the choice. He always gives you the option. So if you choose God, choose God's will, I will be strong. I will be courageous. I will follow your word. You'll prosper. You'll have good success. God's on your side. But if you just kick back, it's like, well, I don't feel like it. I'm scared. I can't do anything about it. What do you think I am, like a lion or something? God says, okay, you don't want it? All right. You're not going to go for it? Okay. He can't make you be blessed. God can't make you be healthy. God can't make you be happy. You are made in the likeness and image of God. You have a will. You make choices. You can choose eternity with God or away from God. He will protect your right to vote. Make sure you choose right. Make sure you choose God's will because that's the highest level of life. Now, notice in these verses, there's nothing about emotion or feeling. This is where many of us get tricked. The devil tricks us because we feel scared. So the devil says, well, you're scared. You can't use your faith because you're scared. Who said anything about that? I can feel one way and believe another way. I can feel. Like if my child is tragically sick, right, serious fever, as a parent, I'm feeling the trauma. I'm feeling, uh, right, but as a believer, I'm saying, thank you, Father, for healing. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. My feelings do not dictate what I believe. Right? Wendy and I are going through our struggles. You know, a lot of times she's not real clear. And <laughs> you know, Wendy needs to renew her mind a lot. <laughs> By the way, was Wendy up here begging for Instagram followers? Whoa. It is pretty, it's interesting. She had 17,000 Instagram followers. 30,000? 30, wow, you're like popular. I didn't know I was married to somebody that big. 30,000 Instagram followers in one day canceled. Now, they don't do that to worldly people. They only do that to godly people. But she's coming back now. She's got 17 new followers. She's going over 100 today. That's what we do. We come back. We come back strong. Where was I? So Wendy and I have an argument, right? Where she, she needs to renew her mind. I'm trying to prove I'm right. Right? I can be angry. I can be frustrated. I can be upset, right? Human emotion, feeling. But I can still be kind and understanding, and I can stop and say, you're right. You're right, Wen. I, 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 need, I need to change. Do I feel like it? No. I feel like fighting. I feel like, ah. <laughs> but what I believe is love wins, 
Forgiveness wins. Understanding wins. See, here's where some of us miss it. We think because we feel one way that we have to do that. I got to be true to my feelings. No, you don't. Your feelings are up and down. Right? If you're on the job and you get scared, should you be true to your feelings? No. You say, God, what you want me to do right now? God wants you to go in there and negotiate that deal. God wants you to make that sale. God wants you to step up and make that play. God wants you to be strong and very courageous. Yeah, but I feel. Emotions will follow what you be, what you do, how you act. If you follow emotions, your life's going on a downward decline. Well, I just got to do what I feel. That's why you're broke and working on your third marriage and have a little weight problem. (laughs) No, you don't do what you feel. You be. You be strong. You be courageous. You be disciplined. You be like Jesus. Do I feel like Jesus? No but I'm going to be like Jesus. See, we overcome those emotions by choosing God. And that's how we live. That's how you win. And the promise of God, you'll prosper. And you'll have good success. Well, I just want to do what I feel like doing. I was with the kids the other day. I don't feel like it. Pick up your toys. I don't feel like it. We don't care. (laughs) Nobody cares how you feel. Do what's right, and you'll get right results. Be strong, be courageous, follow God's word, and you will prosper and have good success. That's what God wants for you. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to prosper and have good success. So courage is Believing that you can overcome every challenge. Courage is confidence that God is with you. Courage is the will to fight until you win. Courage is the ability to act on God's word and overcome every negative circumstance. Courage is seen in what you believe, in what you say, and how you act. Courage has nothing to do with how you feel. Let me give you one last story. 1 Samuel chapter 30, and we'll start in verse 4. 1 Samuel. So David is not yet king, but he's on his way to be the king of Israel, second king of Israel. He was fighting the Philistines. He has a small army. He's fighting against the Philistines. And while he was fighting, the Amalekites came and kidnapped all the wives and children of his little band of brothers. So they come back to their camp, which is called Ziklag. Remember Ziklag? You ever been to Ziklag? It's where they make those zigzag little papers. Y'all don't know very much, do you? You study that in the Hebrew. Zigzag comes from Ziklag. It's in the Bible. So they come back, and the the wives and kids are gone. All their stuff is gone, and it's tragic. So let's read 1 Samuel 30, verse 4. David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. So it's bad, right? They're crying. These soldiers, strong men, they're just crying. David was greatly distressed. Not just stressed, greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. Right? When you have a bad year, you fire the coach. You blame the leadership. That's the way it goes. So they're all blaming David, and they're saying, let's stone him. So now he's got Philistines trying to kill him, Amalekites trying to kill him, and his own guys. The soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. 
But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. The old King James Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's what we do, guys. You get the phone call, you've been diagnosed with cancer. You get the phone call, your, your child's been expelled from school. You get the phone call, uh, your, your business deal didn't go through. Your house loan didn't go through. You get that bad call and you feel the emotion, but instead of letting that control you, you go to the Lord and you encourage yourself in the Lord. Lord, you saved me. Lord, you filled me with your spirit. Lord, you have a plan for my life. You will never leave me nor forsake me. You promised I would prosper and have good success. You, you spend a few minutes with the Lord, you start feeling that inner strength. You can't get it from somebody else. right? It's good that our friends are encouraging, and they should be, but it doesn't matter because you can encourage yourself in the Lord. Well, nobody ever encourages me. All right, you and God got to take this on. You and God got to win this battle. And God is enough. You encourage yourself in the Lord. Well, David then, the next verse says, inquired of the Lord. What do I do, Lord? Do I pursue? Do I go after this army? And the Lord said, go get them, boy. And David took off with a few of his men. And they captured those Amalekites and won that battle and saved all their wives and children. David recovered it all. Here's your promise from God. Recover it all. Cancer came, recover it all. Bankruptcy came, recover it all. Uh, uh, loans and debts, recover it all. Uh, financial crisis, recover it all. That's the promise from God. David encouraged himself in the Lord, and he recovered it all. That's our attitude, right? They, they, they try to uh, influence our church, buy our church, whatever. Hey, we encourage ourselves in the Lord. We will recover it all and even more, yeah. right? We're going to win every battle. We're going to rise above every circumstance. That's the spirit of the Christian. That's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the roar that comes out of our heart. That's the people that God said, you'll prosper and you'll have good success. So I pray today that courage is rising up in you. Courage is leading your life. You are strong and very courageous. And as eyes are closed, before we go today, if you've not been born again, or, or you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, and you want something more, something new in your walk with God, I want to pray with you. I want to add my faith to yours. If you would say, Pastor, I, I need something new. I want a new relationship with God. Would you lift up your hand right now? And we're going to pray before we go today. And I want to pray for you. I want to add my faith to yours. I want to know I'm born again. Just wave out. I'm not going to call you out. I just want to see where you are. I want to be filled with the Spirit. I want that strength of the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hand. We're going to pray with you before we go today. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just lift it up high for a moment. Good. Thank you. Hey, and online friends, we want you to get in on this as well. Okay, let's put our hands down. Let's pray together. Church, be, be my prayer team today, would you? Let's say it out loud. Today, Father, I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe he died for me and rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new person. Fill me with your spirit. Thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there this morning.